Ah, I'm so tired. Ah, been working out a lot. Ah, I need, I need, I need water or something that would revitalize me. Can somebody give me something or you know isotonic drink or whatever you call it? Basta would satisfy my craving, please. Somebody. Hey, hey, bro. Yeah. What's What's up, man? What's can, that good? Maybe you can help me, man. Yeah. What's wrong? You know, I mean, I've been thinking these days. I've, I'm so hungry and I'm thirsty. I mean, from, everything from your, is just fr so fr routine. From your workout? Yeah, everything. Workout, physical workout. You know, I, I have work every week, like 44 hours or 50 hours. You know, I'm just so tired. Hours. Yeah. 50 hours per, per week. Per week, yeah. I'm so tired, man. And I know I've, I've been a Christian and yeah, I was, I became a Christian last year. Last year. Just so you know, but things are just the same every week. Maybe you can help mm. me with that. But you just mentioned a while ago that you're thirsty, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I have something for you. What's that? Pepsi. You want some? Uh, yeah, maybe let's uh, try. Yeah, I, maybe, think the, maybe. I think this will help you, man, for a while. Are you sure? Hold this for a moment. I pag korog. You know, I'm thirsty and hungry. You're thirsty and yeah. hungry. Drink, uh, uh, dr drink some. Uh, drink more. Still not okay. Still not okay. Not satisfied. TBH, TBH, still not okay. What's TBH? To be honest, man. Still not okay. Okay. <laughs> I That's still need <laughs> something, you know, uh, to make kayo. my life LR happy. Kayo. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, it, it does I not satisfy that, yeah. you. So, so what do you need? What I don't else know. do you need? Uh, That's what I've, I've said a while ago, that everything is so routine and nothing. It's, it's mm. nothing to me. So... It seems to me that you were looking for more. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm You're like craving for more? Yeah, exactly. Really craving? As in. As in? Yeah. Ah, why don't you join our LTC? What's that? What, what, what? Leadership training what? camp. Man, I, I tell you, I believe this will help you. When would that be? And, you know, I'm it will still be busy. on October 29 to November 1 at Hidden Paradise. Uh, but don't worry, it's hidden paradise, but it's already been found, so no okay. need to... Okay, so how much would it cost me if I would join? Uh, yeah, is that it? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. that's okay. it. Okay, so how much would it cost me, perhaps? Uh, you will have to pay one three. One three. Okay. Okay. So November, I mean, it will end on November 1, but it will start on October 29. All right. So I believe, man, this is the, the camp that you've been waiting for. So it's not maybe I I'm I'm still confused if that's if it's if that's still the same with what you just offered no, to me. No, it's not just about maybe Pepsi, ba? I would go there. Na wala along. No man, it's not just about Pepsi. Let okay. Me, let me okay. taste the Pepsi. Thank you so much. Hey, it's not just I will about try. Pepsi, okay? I will try. I'm convinced. All right. So guys, if you're if you're like me, who is craving, and you know if you're a youth, a handsome youth there, yeah, you know. Just like the two You're of us right. here. Maybe, yeah, because I'm here in front. <laughs> no. Yeah, but yeah. going back, you know, I agree. I, I highly encourage those who could relate with me that, you know, life seems so boring and, you know, you're a Christian, but you don't know why you are a Christian in the first place and what's the purpose of God in your life. Then maybe you could join with me on, yeah, when was that, please? October 29th and November yeah. 1. And I hope to see you there. Thank you and God bless.
Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. How many of you are happy that you are here this afternoon? Honestly. Praise God. Now, how many of us here are blessed every Sunday? You say you're blessed. You're, you're excited to meet the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're blessed every Sunday, you, you cannot just... Uh, hold your your blessing, your excitement. You want to bring others with you, right? So reminding you to invite your friends. Who has invited someone this afternoon? Okay, who has invited? Okay, if, if you brought someone this afternoon, you will receive a double blessing today. Amen? All right. So just... Just want to repeat what was announced already. Happening for the first time in this in this generation, the the OPM. You know what's OPM? You know what's OPM? Okay, ask the person next to you what's OPM. Aside from its uh, original Pinoy music, OPM at HOP means overnight prayer meeting. Okay, happening this coming Friday. Now, this is something that, that uh, I grew with as a youth. Uh, back then, mga five years ago when I was still in college, uh, we used to have, yeah, five years ago, uh, we used to have the, the overnight prayer meeting. And it's one of the big events of the youth every month, right? And we are actually reviving it. So we want to invite you this coming Friday at the rooftop. We're going to have our overnight prayer meeting. Yeah, Pastor, mga tug, ta na. Okay, overnight gani. Pastor, pwede sa lang, pwede gabin an. Okay, overnight gani. <laughs> so uh, it will start around 11 and then ends at 5 a.m. So we're going to have. Don't worry, it's not what you think. It's not just prayer, but it's prayer with so many things. It's when you pray and you enjoy praying. So there are several ways, uh, creative ways to do the praying. Okay? Just want to give you, okay? I'm just so excited over it. I'm not supposed to share this with you. But one, one of the things that we will be praying is to pray for the city. Okay, and since in our rooftop, you know, who, has, who has been to our rooftop already? In our rooftop, don't, don't you know that we have a 360 degrees uh, view of, the, of Cebu City? So one of those things that we do this coming Friday is just stand there and look at the city and just pray for the city. The same way Jesus, remember? In the gospel, Jesus Christ was in, was in Mount Mount of the Olives, and he was just looking at the city of Jerusalem and he prayed for it. Now we are going to do that. That's one, one of the exciting things that we will be doing this Friday. So join us. This is not just for the youth. This is for the youth, the young adults. If you can make it to the sixth floor without elevator, you, you can join. Right? Happening this coming Friday. You have your Bibles with you now? Okay. Let's open it to Matthew chapter 6. Last week, were you here last week? Okay, we talk about the four misconceptions of a prayer. And we studied Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. We will continue with the series. We will study verse 9 to 13. All right. So do you have your Bibles now? Okay, may I request everyone to please rise as we give reverence to the Word of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from the evil one. May God bless the reading from His Holy Word. Please be seated. All right, so this afternoon we continue with our series, Growing Deep in God. And this is part seven of our series. And in this series, we are talking about prayer as the source of communion with God. We said that prayer is not just getting what we want, but prayer is getting close to God. And one of the blessings when we are close with God is when we get what we want, right? Now let me start with this story, okay? There was an American journalist who was assigned to Jerusalem to do a documentary on the pilgrimage of the Jews, especially their prayer life. And one of the most important things that the Jews would do in Jerusalem is to pray, right, facing this particular wall. Do you know what, what this wall was or is called? Okay, this is the wailing wall, okay? And if you're asking, Pastor, na they wail, they have a store, nga nung wailing man. Okay, dili na siya maong a wail lang ipasabot. It's known as the wailing wall, spelled, how do you spell wailing? W-A-I, okay. Not the, the, the fish, right? This wailing wall, this is what's left with the temple of the Jews that was destroyed, totally destroyed, leveled to the ground, on AD 70 when the Romans came and destroyed Jerusalem. So this is what's left. And for the Jews, this is so holy. And so people would simply come, not just the Jews, but the Christians, they would come and they would pray thinking that this is a holy place. And if you notice on the cracks of the wall, there are pieces of paper inserted. These are actually what? Prayers, okay, prayer requests. So all sorts of people, Christians, uh, Jews, and this journalist was was caught, you know, his attention was caught over this particular old Jewish rabbi, okay? This rabbi was fervently praying, and, and the journalist came and asked, uh, Rabbi, how many years you've been praying in this particular wall? And the rabbi answered, you know, every day for the last 50 years. Wow. Imagine, imagine the, the persistence. Imagine the, the love of this rabbi for, for prayer, for God. Okay? 50 years just facing that wall, right? And the, the journalist asked another question. Well, if you've been doing this for the last 50 years, how does it feel? I'm sure... You're so close with God. I'm sure you can, you can feel the, the glory, the presence of God. So what, what did you feel for the last 50 years? And here's the answer of the old rabbi. It feels like I'm talking to a wall. Okay? Just, just like that. Talking to the wall. In other words, it was just wall. He was doing it sincerely. He was doing it fervently. But then, it's just the wall. Now, our message is something like that. How many of us here are prayerful, and in our prayer life, it's like there's just a wall, and there's nobody there. It's just an empty wall. So the thing that we will study this, this afternoon, we want to know the obstacles to a vibrant prayer life. Like, we want to answer the question, why is it that, Sometimes we feel like there's a wall between us and God. Sometimes we think that we are simply talking to nobody. Why is it that our prayer seems to be unanswered? What makes our prayer, you know, powerless, ineffective? According to James 5.16, the Bible tells us the prayer of a righteous man is what? Powerful and effective. Prayer can move mountains. Do you believe that? Prayer can heal the sick. 
Prayer can provide provision in our tables. Prayer can bring the dead people to life. Prayer is powerful. Prayer brings life to a dead person. But why is it that sometimes, and I don't know with you, maybe not sometimes, but why is it that your prayer life, my prayer life, remains powerless? It seems, it seems there's no effect, right? And maybe for some of you, you quit on praying. You know, what na pray? Lord, just like what the handsome guy mentioned here a while ago, Murag, everything becomes routine. No? Routine na lang ba? Is that your life? Nga routine na lang? You go to church, you go to work, you pray, you sleep, you eat. And another week comes and then it's all the same. Now, what are some of the obstacles? All right. In Victor Hugo's novel entitled 93, this was a novel that, that uh, gives us what happened during the, the French Revolution. Okay. Now, one particular ship was not only uh, battling you know, with enemies, but they were also battling with a storm. So while they were sailing, there was a storm going on, rocking the whole ship. Okay. But what made, you know, what made it worse was that beneath the ship, in the lower deck, there is a cannon that is loose. It wasn't fastened. So, as the wave would shake the boat, ang katong kanon pod magunsaman, magsigig ka move, no? And it's dangerous. There was a potential explosion down there. And so, the captain said, you know what? The greatest battle is not just with the enemy, it's not just with the storm, but this greatest battle was what? Was within. And you know what? Sometimes it's the same thing with our lives. Sometimes the greatest battle that we have to fight is not the battle outside, but it's the battle within our souls. There is a battle going on, a spiritual battle that we have to face. And because of this battle, there are obstacles that prevent us from really communing with God. Now, these are the things I want to to talk this evening. So are you with me? Okay. Anyone? Anyone have seen uh, Katong Spider-Man 3? Not the new Spider-Man, but the, the previous one. Kahinomdo mo aning scene? This is the... Okay. Unsa to itawag ni Venom, right? And this particular scene, that black thing, you know, slowly it you know, kanang, uh, kanang made Spider-Man bad, right? It controlled him, but then it was a struggle to remove. And in that particular scene, where was that scene? Where did it take place? Kung katong kaning yang gitang-tang ning Venom. It was in the church, right? There was some symbolism there. That it took a, a church bell for for Spider-Man to really fight and totally remove the venom from him. You know what? In our lives, it's something like that. It's a battle, and we have to face it ferociously <laughs> and fear, fearlessly so that our prayers will be vibrant, okay? So from the Lord's Prayer, I am going to give you six obstacles to a vibrant prayer life. And our goal is to know these obstacles and to remove them in our lives. So as we go through these six obstacles, let us try to, to reflect. Do we have this obstacle in us? And let us slowly strip them off from us. So the Lord's Prayer, it's not just a pattern of prayer, but actually embedded in the prayer, Jesus Christ is giving us hints as to the most important things in our prayer life. All right, so are you ready? Let's begin with verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Notice the first part. He mentions about the Father and the holiness of the name of God. So the first obstacle 
the first problem to our prayer life is unsound theology. And we, we talked already two Sundays ago. We cannot pray effectively if our view of God is defective. Why? Because our prayer is addressed to God. And if our view of God is wrong, if our theology is wrong, then our prayer will be wrong. So the greatest hindrance to a vibrant prayer life is ignorance of God. And so many people, remember last week, we talked about the misconceptions of prayer. How come people have wrong way to pray? It's because of their ignorance of God. Now let me tell you a story about a Christian lady and an atheist, right? A Christian lady and atheist. Of course, a Christian lady is so fervent in her prayers. Every day she would pray and believing and trusting the Lord. But the, the atheist neighbor would mock this lady. He's like, you know what? You're crazy. You're doing all this stuff. You're praying. And you know what? You're talking to nobody. There is no God. And this Christian lady, you know, doesn't bother to, to you just welcome the, the mockery of this, of this neighbor. So, basagdan lang niya, no? So, kapadayan lang siya, pray, pray. And then one particular day, kaning Christian lady, nahutdan siya supply sa food. So, as usual, on sa gibuhat ni Christian lady. Okay, on her knees, praying, Lord, I thank you so much that in plenty and in want, you remain the same. Lord, thank you so much that this problem that I have today, you will provide the needs. Amen. So, naminaw ang atheist, you know, you're really crazy. There is no God who will answer you. So, nakikuha, nakahuna na, una, nakahuna na, og idea ang, ang atheist. And siya, okay, this is what I will do. I will buy the groceries. Akong ibutang sa iya ang front door. Okay? To prove. So, of course, iya dengi, pislit ang doorbell. Ding, ding! Unya pag abri sa Christian Lee, Wow, praise the Lord. Lord, you're so great. You're so amazing, Lord. I prayed this morning and now you provided. And then in Gawas, think it is. There is no God. I'm the one who bought that for you. Okay? Nya ingon ding, what good nagpaapekto ang Christian. He said, "Lord, thank you so much. I know, Lord, that you will provide my need. But Lord, the thing that I did not know is that you make the devil pay for it." You make the devil pay for it. Okay? So what's the point? Whether it comes from the devil, it comes from anyone, it's your, our belief in God that really matters. Amen? Effectiveness in prayer is directly proportional to our belief in God. That is why in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, please take note of this verse. If you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Now, what's the most important phrase in that verse? It's not that we receive, no. The most important thing there is this, if you believe. Brethren in the Lord, how much do you believe in God? Because the problem with us is this, we have, we have huge problems, we have huge needs, but we have a very small view of God. Diba? Takok itong problem, but then ang atong view ni God, gamay kayo. Why don't you change it? Okay? Instead of moving mountains over, you know, over our belief in God, what happened? Ang atong mga mountains, what you'd kamove. Na naman, because our view of God is so small. So one obstacle to a vibrant prayer life is this, unsound theology. We do not know our God. But friends, remember in what we've been studying in this series, our God is the God of the how much more. Amen? According to our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 6 verse 8, verse 8, your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So what we need to do is to strengthen our faith. 
Okay? Don't just allow your problems to overwhelm you. Be overwhelmed with the bigness of our God. Amen? That's why when Jesus Christ taught the disciples how to pray started, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. It means your name is so great. Your name is so holy. You are so awesome that my needs are nothing to you, God. Amen? Can you say that with your problems? You problem, you are nothing to my God. You are nothing to my God. So that's the first obstacle, unsound theology. We look at God so little, right? Number two, obstacle number two, unyielded wills. Someone ng unyielded will, unsurrendered will, right? Now, I saw a saying, if, if there's a will, there's a way. If there's a will, there's always a way. The same thing goes with there's a will, there's a way. Now, according to verse 10, or verse, what verse is this? Yeah, verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? That's the second part of the prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Second reason why our prayers are not effective because we ask God for God to change His will so that our wills be done. It's the reverse. But the Bible says His will must be done. Look at 1 John 5.14. Okay, look at 1 John 5.14. Let's read this together. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And of course, the same is true when you reverse it. When we ask something and it is not the will of God, then He will not hear us. The problem with us is this. When we pray, we do not surrender ourselves first to God. Unyielded will. Saan man unyielded? Kana bang imog yapong gi withhold ba? Wa kaning surrender ni Lord na Lord, money. Now, question, what causes us not to surrender our wills to God? On some, on some cause, anak, Pastor, nga naman nga, when we pray, we, we tend to be so selfish. We tend to be self-centered. Why? Why is it nga atong will, di man pariya sa will ni Lord? Okay, turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The answer is there. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, okay? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, according to Paul, we cannot approve, we will not know the will of God because our minds are conformed to the world. Say, pasabot anak, pastor. When we let the world dictate our hearts, our desires, our prayers tend to be so self-centered. No? Mone kasagaran na karon. Because we are too attached with the world, even ang atong mga prayers, worldly kayo. They're all about materialism. They're all about my, my security, my good health. Wala. So, sa atong prayer, okay, I want you to make a a reflection, no? I want you to evaluate your prayer. Why ba na puno puno og my me myself? Diba? And probably in your prayer life, there's no mention of Lord, thy will be done. Okay? Thy will be done. And that's the reason why our prayer life is very ineffective. Because our wills are not surrendered to God. Pero ang right prayer day according to Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. So the purpose of prayer is not to give us what we want. It is to make us the kind of people God wants. Let me repeat that. The purpose of prayer is not to get what we want, but to make us the kind of people that God wants. Ogmonay obstacle, unyielded will. 
Number three, unrighteous motives. Unrighteous motives. Motives that are not right. Unrighteous motives. Look at the next verse. Give us today our daily bread. Notice the supplication. Give us today our daily bread. What is daily bread for the Jews at the time? It's a basic need. Most basic. Bread for the Jews is not a luxury. It is a basic need. Right? Now, little Johnny was praying as usual before going to sleep. But in this particular evening, the prayer of Johnny was different. Why? Because he was shouting. Lord, I thank you for my mama and my papa. Lord, I thank you for my life. Lord, I thank you for my birthday tomorrow. And Lord, just to remind you, the bicycle that I want. Amen. And you know, na disturb si mama. Johnny, why were you shouting? You know, Johnny, God is not deaf. You can just say, you don't have to shout. Yes, I know, Mama, God is not deaf, but Daddy is. What's the point? Para asa na itong prayer. Para dahi ni Daddy, para dahi kali. You know, sometimes, okay, let's, look, let's go back to the Bible. James 4, 3, let's read together. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives and you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So Jesus Christ is teaching us here, don't just ask for your own welfare. The reason why God will not answer our prayers because our prayers are too selfish. They are selfish. You need to ask someone to pray for you. But our prayers should be addressed for others. Amen? Well, I'm not saying, Pastor, it's wrong to pray for ourselves. No, of course. God wants us to pray. But the point is this. On say salty sa Bible, don't pray just that you may spend what you get on your own pleasure. That's why Jesus says, give us today our daily bread. Lord, if you're going to give me peanut butter, if you're going to add kanang, you know, salmon, if you're going to add lain padiha ng mga side, side dish, okay ra, Lord. <laughs> Pero okay ra ko sa daily bread. So, I want you to check your motives. What are your motives when you pray? Is it only for your own sake? Remember, we are intercessors. We intercede for others. Remember our lesson a uh, few months ago? We are priests. And as priests, we don't just pray for ourselves. We pray for others. Alright? So, my assignment for you tonight, before you go, don't fail, don't fail to pray for the person on your left and on your right. Okay, I want you to tanawa ko ng person sa imong left o sa imong right. Whisper a prayer for that person. Maybe, imong tupad, imong wife, imong husband, imong anak, or your friend. Okay? God is delighted to hear the prayers, not just addressed for the self, but for others. Amen? So, another obstacles. So, to? Unrighteous motives. Wrong motives. Very selfish motives. Alright. Obstacle number four. Unconfessed sins. Unconfessed sin. Okay, let's continue. And forgive us our debts. That's what Jesus said. Forgive us our debts in verse 12. One and, excuse me, one of the major obstacle of prayer is sin. Alright? That's why Jesus added this in the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our debts. In other words, forgive us our sins. One reason that God would fall deaf ear on us, it's because of our unconfessed sins or unrepented sins. Look at Isaiah 59 verse 2. But your iniquities have what? 
your sins have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not what? Hear. So, ang kanadya ito mga sala, nga wa na ito, girepet, wa ta nangayag pa sa ilo, they are like walls. They stop God from hearing our prayers. What's the wage of sin? Death. Supposedly, prayers, when we pray, prayers are supposed to be what? Sweet-smelling aroma that will come no? in the presence of God in heaven. That's the symbolism of the uh, what do you call that? Ilang i-burn sa una? Incense. Diba? Diba? Mag Mag-burn ng incense? Kana ganing ano? What's the symbolism there? That's, that's, that's burning of incense. That's biblical. But that's not the essence of the incense. The essence of the incense is what? The prayer. They symbolize. According to Revelation, the incense they are sweet-smelling aroma to God. The purpose there is for people to understand that the incense, they are symbols. Symbols of what? The prayers of the saints. And they are supposed to be sweet-smelling aroma before God. But the problem is this. When we pray, and we pray out from a sinful heart, out from a sinful soul, our aroma is not sweet-smelling, but they are what? Smell of death. Diba? Nakasuway na mo anang simot magbuwak o niya mao manig bahong bahong St. Peter. Diba? Okay, for the last few months daghang kayong namatay sa atong church, no? O niya, kung masimot kag buwak, murag imong smell, dili na flower. Hmm. Cosmo. <laughs> okay? And sometimes when we pray to God and our prayers are coming from unrepentant hearts, they are not like flowers before. They are like the smell of death because death is the result of sin. So evaluate your life. Nganawa gitubag ni Lord imong prayer because you have not repented from your sin. And God knows what we are doing. Mona, basic yun na to Christians. Listen. Before we come to God, we go to God and, you know, ask Him. First, we have to make ourselves clean before God. Lord, are there things in my life that block your ears? So tonight, you have to ask God, Lord, reveal to me. Lord, convict my heart. Lord, on sami ako nabuhat nga sala. Lord, did I lie? Did I committed fornication? Did I lusted over something? Lord, did I cheat it? Did I cheat anyone? We have to ask ourselves. And we have to ask for forgiveness. Look at Psalm 66, verse 18. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. See? So, usana ka major obstacle. Mga yung no? We have to repent. So every Sunday is a good time for us to cleanse our Sabbath. But again, Pastor, every Sunday rin tayo magpasailo. No, daghan na kayo na. We have to ask forgiveness every day. Amen? We have to ask for The moment the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin, don't wait for the communion Sunday to come. Di ba? Kanang, kanang sala na to ba? O sara na ka blood ni Jesus na pasaylo na na. Mura na siya ka ng commercial sa joy. No? Isang patak. No? Sala nga sebo, matangtang sang katutak. Mauna ang, ang blood ni Jesus. Isa lang patak. Right? And Jesus already, you know, shed His blood many years ago. And the effect of the shed blood of Christ, it is still very effective today. So whatever you confess in the name of Jesus today, the Bible promised you will be forgiven. Amen? So tell the person next to you, you will be forgiven if you confess your sins. No? I want to assure you, don't go home tonight still bringing your burdens of sin. Amen? Lay it down. No? Forsake it. Because Jesus Christ will 
forgive you. All right, number five. Not only, not only unconfessed sins, unresolved relationships. They block our prayer life. Look at this. As we forgive our debtors. So, so Jesus Christ is not just talking about me sinning against you, Lord. But sometimes there are conflicts. And these conflicts would affect our prayer life. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And when you stand praying, ingon si Jesus, no, nagpray na ka, suddenly you realize that you, you, you hold anything against anyone. On say salt ni Jesus, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. The same essence in Matthew 5, it's not projected. Matthew 5, 23, 24. Say, Sultan Jesus, Matthew 5, 23, 24. If you are offering your gifts at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Say, Sultan Jesus, leave your gifts there. First go and res reconcile to your brother or to your sister. And then come back so that your gifts will be acceptable to God. What's the point of Jesus? Our conflicts with other believers or other people will hinder our prayer life. So, kinsa may nakundra ni mo this week? Diba? So, mauna nga, if you have embittered someone, doula din siya, no? So, matingan na yung office mate nga, ninkalit lang kagdol, you know what, forgive me, forgive me. Ano ka diha? Namang ko kay planong paliton unya di man ihatag ni Lord kung di ko ni may forgive <laughs> wrong motives gyapon back to obstacle number 3 okay see so mo nang di dai matubak kay daghan dai mga blockages no and you know we have a heart heart doctor here and nga no mang dili mo flow ang atong blood kay naay nag block unsa man na sila tawag ana Nelson Mga cholesterol. <laughs> diba? And in our spiritual life, nga nung walay flow sa communication na to ni God, because na ay gitawag na tog spiritual cholesterol. We have to remove them. So have you hurt someone? Mga ba nag-asawa din rin? Basing nag-away mo. You know, it will affect your prayer life. Okay? Maybe na nasuko ninyo. The Bible says, don't just ask forgiveness, forgive them. Amen? Pangayog pasaylo, og pasaylo ah. So that your prayers will what? Will be acceptable to God. Remember the cross again? Cross? Our relationship to God is symbolized with the cross. So the, the what, what do you call that line? <laughs> the vertical line, the vertical line that symbolizes my relationship to God. But then there is the horizontal line. What is that? That symbolizes my relationship with you, with others. Now, if my relationship with others is not good, it will affect my relationship with God. So we have to make peace with our brothers and sisters. Amen? Parehaning duhag iring og iro nag-away. Tanawa. No? Oh. Diba? At peace na sila. Wala na. Diba? Pero kaya ba mo ang tinood story, Ana? nag na sila. Gituok na niya. <laughs> Dali, oy. Peaceful kaya na as lang doha. Okay? So, I want you to, again, evaluate your life. Kinsa may imong nasukan. Kinsa kay nasuko ni mo. Okay? Ask for forgiveness. Okay? And we go to the last obstacle, unguarded life. Unguarded life. What is this? Look at the last phrase of the Lord's Prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What is this? This is praying for protection. Why do we need God's protection? Because the evil one is all around us. Listen, brethren, we are not only living in a physical world, okay? There is a spiritual world, you know, 
going in parallel with our physical life. Satan is there to tempt us. Remember John 10.10? 10, Satan only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will use whatever temptation to trip you and me off. That is why Jesus closed with this prayer, lead us not into temptation. Why? Because one obstacle that will affect our vibrant prayer life is when we leave ourselves unguarded. When we put our defenses down. When we let our defenses open. You know what? Satan is very opportunistic. Satan would only look for some small cracks in our lives and when he sees one, he would simply take advantage and make sure that your life is defeated. That is why Jesus says, always pray that God would lead us not into temptation. Don't live your day unguarded. Always use the provision. What's the provision? Ephesians chapter 6, what's the provision? You have the armor of God. Amen? And that takes another sermon. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 18. Okay, let's just, let's just recall the armor of God. We need the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, belt of truth. What else? Sword of the Spirit, which is? the Word of God. We cannot go out and be defenseless. No. Be guarded always. And one of the most important guard is to pray for God's protection. Amen? Don't just pray for your own protection. If you're a, if you're a wife, okay, can I see the, the, the hands of the wives here? Wife, wife. Okay, happy, happy wife. Okay, if you're a happy wife, then I know your husbands are also happy. Because happy wife means happy life. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Tinood yun na. Amen yun ko, anak. Basta happy atong wife, happy yun atong life. Now, wives, listen. You have, you have a big, big responsibility. I know na imong husband will go out na sa balay, will work. But the moment your husband is out, okay, the devil is already waiting to tempt your husband. Okay? And the kind temptation, it comes in many ways. Various colors. Your prayer is this, Lord, do not lead my husband into temptation. Pray always. Okay? Pangayuag na, Lord, surround my husband, Lord God, with your truth. So that, Lord, kumutan aw siya o babay, Lord, muana siya nga, Mas guapa pa kung wife ana. Oh, di ba? Oh, Lord, tempting kay Lord but I don't want to sin against you. Pareha ba ni Daniel? Was it Daniel? No, oh, Joseph. <laughs> okay, very good. Si Joseph, remember? He was tempted by by Potiphar's wife. Okay? Pero sa may gibuhat ni Daniel. Ingon si Daniel nga Oh, Joseph, da ingon si mo Daniel. Si Lion, man, ito, no? Okay, ingon si Joseph nga, why should I sin against my God? Di ba? So, maupod na. Di ba? You pray. Now, husband, you also pray for your wives. That God will surround them with God's protection. Why? Kay kung mag, kumuhato na na sa Ayala. Kumuhato na na sa department store. Kung walay, walay protection ni God, I tell you, huto na lang palit. Masyak na lang ka sa bills. Amen? <laughs> Dili? Oh. So, I pray na lang, Lord, I pray, Lord, nga why sale ka ron sa, sa Ayala? Lord, I pray nga butahan ni mo siya, Lord, sa tanam nga nilut nga, Lord, ang mga fashion ka ron, Lord, bati, so that di siya ma matintal. Okay? Because it's, it's so easy for us to be what? Again, attracted by the colors of the world. And sometimes we get things we don't need. Diba? We have to be guarded because Satan would use any means to make us sin. 
Okay, final verse, 2 Corinthians 11.3. But I am afraid that just as Eve was, con was, was deceived by the serpents, take note, the serpents, cunning. Ano sa man ang cunning sa binisaya? Kanang, kaning, kaning, kanang, ano? Cunning. Okay, what is cunning? Cunning. Why? Subtle, no? Subtle. Sa pa? Maro kayo, oh. Your minds may be somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Now, on sa ni Paul, what will lead us astray? The cunning of the devil. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, don't think of the devil as, you know, an ugly guy with horns, with tail, okay? Because the devil will not show up to you in that way. I tell you, the devil will show up to you in the guise of beautiful women, in the guise of beautiful bags, blouses, diba? shoes. So we have to guard our lives. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So there you have it. Six obstacles. Let's name them once again. Number one, unsound theology. Say second. Unyielded will. Next. Unrighteous motives, unconfessed sins, unresolved conflicts, and unguarded life. My prayer is that our lives would be purified from all these obstacles so that our communication with God is free-flowing. Amen? And with its flowing, blessings will simply come. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for reminding us that there are obstacles. Satan would make so many obstacles. A lot of them, Lord, are within Help us, Lord. Give us the grace. Give us the strength to repent from our sins and simply bow down to you and surrender our lives to you, O God. You know what's best for us, O God. We surrender our lives back to you. Do as you will. Have your way in us. Father, I know, Lord, that some of these obstacles are so hard to get, to remove, hard to remove. Help us, Lord God. Strip them off in us. We now ask for the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, convict us. Help us to admit Help us to just be open before you this afternoon. We confess all our sins to you right now. We ask that you will make our prayer life vibrant, effective, powerful, so that we can ask you for whatever we need. You promise, Lord, it shall be given. Lord, maybe there are people here tonight who needs to surrender their lives to Jesus. Maybe somebody invited you. You are not yet sure if you're a believer, you're a Christian. But tonight can be height of your salvation. You may want to ask, Lord, how can I be saved? How can my sins be forgiven? Jesus died for you already. All you have to do is claim the finished work of Jesus at the cross. All you have to do is put your faith in Christ and make that decision. Lord, today, I want to surrender everything to you. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Jesus, 
you died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me, Lord. Today, I open my life. I want to welcome you into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Help me. Grant me the grace to follow your will. May your will be done in my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Second Corinthians verses six to se- nine, verses six to seven says, "The point is this: whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully." Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us now offer to God the portion due to him, not out of responsibility or reluctance, but out of love and joy for him. As we offer our tithes, pledges, and love offerings. Praise you for this, the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Undeserving as we are, out of your generous heart, you've given us more than what we need. This, in turn, is but a tiny portion of the huge grace given to us. Grant our leaders the wisdom to use these offerings for your glory and for the furtherance of your name. We pray this won't be wasted and will be used mightily. We give you back all the glory and praise due to your name. In Jesus' name we pray closing let's just sing this song as a prayer as we offer our lives we reevaluate ourselves
serve you with our best we have not fulfilled our commitments, our promises but you are a faithful God, you promise Lord that those who come to you in repentance you will forgive them you will cleanse them from all unrighteousness so Lord we want to receive your grace of healing bring healing to all of us here heal our broken hearts heal our sorrowful hearts make us whole again I pray Lord that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us here that we go home not sad but we go home bringing with us the joy of your salvation the joy of your forgiveness that you will fulfill your wonderful plans in each of our lives because we are going to obey you. Lord, we cannot obey you on our own. Please grant us the grace. It's only by your grace that we can follow your will. And Lord, that is our aim in life, that in everything that we do, thy will be done. Lord, help us not to go back to that old life to that filthy life. Give us a fresh and brand new life with you. And thank you so much, Father, that every 
Sunday, every Lord's Day is a day for us to be revived, to be renewed, because that's who you are. You have the power, Lord, to bring newness in our lives. Bless your people, Lord, this week. May you fulfill, O oh God, your plans in each of our lives. Help us, Lord, do our work in such a way that your name will be glorified. That when people look at us, that when people look at how we work, look at our business, our profession, they don't see, Lord God, the filthiness of our sins, but they see the glory of your grace. Bless your people who are kneeling here tonight. Some of them are bringing their thanksgiving to you. Some of them are fervently asking, Lord, for things, situations, whatever it is, oh God. I pray right now for the anointing that comes from your spirit to fall on them, Lord God. I pray that your blessing, your anointing will fall on them. That their coming and kneeling before your altar, oh God, will never be in vain because you hear what they are crying out to you. And now, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Let's sing this, church. Lord, I give my life to you. Please.